Welcome to the Retrocade Podcast. This is episode 11, the first episode of the new year, 2016. I am Phil. Sean, it's good to be back. Good. Along another hiatus. Good to be back. We're finally back after uh, a couple weeks. Uh, we had to give ourselves a little break after everything that's happened, uh, the holidays. I ended up going to Florida and Disney World and uh, did some pop culture stuff out there. And uh, also, mo- most importantly, we're in a, sh- a post-episode 7 Force Awakens world. The last time we were talking about uh, our podcast, we were talking about how things would be after it, and now it has happened, and now we get to talk about it a little so bit. We were discussing the hype, the questions. Right. You know, basically, the build up. And the, now, this is the post review of sorts. This is the aftermath of The Force Awakens. How, you know, that, that you can never recreate the build up of something like that. Like, how it was with The Phantom Menace, or even I remember very vividly. 10, almost 11 years now, uh, Revenge of the Sith, how every day for me as a kid in high school was like, oh, this movie's coming out, it's gonna be sick, and we did that, you know, this time as adults, and finally, you know, we went to see it opening night, I've got a little video of us waiting online to see it on the Retrocade YouTube page, and uh, we saw it, and it was great, I love the movie. So, of the, you know, the original, well, the remakes... Preludes. The pre- uh, the prequels? <laughs> the, Correct. The prelude movies. The build-up was certainly biggest for uh, Phantom Menace. Sure, naturally, because you hadn't seen a new Star Wars in, in 16 years. In for me, no. I had the only ones I had seen. I had seen the um, what's it called in theaters? The special editions. They were released them in theaters in '97. Yeah, we discussed that. I I didn't see all three. Uh, yeah, I think I saw two. I, I saw the I saw the first one. I saw A New Hope, then Empire. I remember seeing the both of those, and I think I just didn't go see Return, even though that as a kid that was my favorite. It's funny, see, everyone saw A New Hope. I saw. Yeah, because that was well. the first one to pop I out. Missed Empire huge. for whatever reason. Yeah, Again, well, because because they came out month after month. It was I think it was January, February, and March. I think that's how it went. It was one month after another. Being a nine year old, you don't really have full control. Exactly. When you go to the movies. <laughs> oh, I was eleven. Oh no, no, it was nine. Yeah, because it was 1997. So yeah, exactly. Like you don't, you know. I had I was able to get to two of them, but I don't think I made the third. But I missed Empire. I did see Jedi, but I, we don't. Oh, yeah, as far as I we didn't both see saw Jedi. two out of three. Yeah, we saw you together. We saw them both. Yeah, because I, re- I remember particularly um, the new Wampa scene. My dad, I went with my dad, and he was like, oh, "I gotta go to the bathroom," and I was like, "You gonna miss the Wampa scene?" It was like new. I remember that. He <laughs> missing cool the, the new Wampa. It was like an added do back. Yes, the new. Well, a new hope. I think had the most changes. Empire had the least. And episode six, I think, had some of the grossest change. Obviously, everybody talks about Han Solo shot first as being a terrible change, but I think the um, the the size noodles singing bit that they changed for Return of the Jedi is the most offensive to me. I oh, hate God. that. Terrible. That and, and Boba Fett's voice is the worst change for me of Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that the, slice noodles though. The the, the, the old one is great. I'm gonna put that. I'll put that video up on Retrocade Facebook page. Brief and it yeah. you, you wanted more. And it was gritty too. And it looked, you know, it matched all the other, you know, puppets that they had there. And it reminded you of how the cantina was in Episode Four. It was just a bunch of fucking puppets around, gritty puppets, and that was it. With the the the, the newer one that they did, this new, I think they call it Jedi Rocks, is the song that they do for the. It's that just like the actual like. YouTube song. Yeah, you could look it up as Jedi Rocks. I think that's what ILM named it. And it's just like, it's so cartoonish and it just doesn't fit and it's terrible. Yeah, the extra dancer. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just no need for it. It just it, sucks. It dragged on it. Yeah, it's, it's too long. You had this wonderful, like, mysterious alien song with these, like, yeah. gritty weird puppets. aliens that were awesome. I loved Sice Noodles as a puppet. Who loved that stupid little puppet? I, yeah. Okay, so what is the pig guy with the pipes name? That is, I think, is his name? No, not Rapper Tooney. Is one of them? Max Rebo and Slice Snails are easy. Max Rebo is the one on the on keyboard. The, yeah, it looks and like the, an elephant. Yeah, it's like an elephant on a blue elephant on a keyboard. The keyboard. And then Slice Noodles little, is the singer. Skinny yellow oh, protruded yeah. face. Just plug this in. So uh, you essentially, have this pig guy. He's playing a, a pipe, and he's relatively mysterious. He has like a sunken face, and you can't really. Distinguish what he does, but he's definitely part of that trio, and he kind of have this color scheme of you know blue, yellow, pink. It, it works, but you really don't know who he is. They explain him very minimally. Now, do you, do you have an idea what his name is, or uh, the 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 pale guy playing the like the pink? Flute. He's like a pink, pink yeah, pa- pink playing like kind of like a flute. Let's see. Uh, I'll probably get it once I see it. 
but I, I don't remember what happened. I, I know Rapper Toonie was another one in the background, but I, I, I think that might have been a... Um, I'm going to go look it up here and we'll find out. So with, in regards to... Uh, sure. The new movie. Oh, Droop, is it Droopy McCool? Droopy McCool. Awesome what a ridiculous name, name yeah. Like, you know, actually, that's a bar name right there. Yeah. Droopy, Droopy McCool. McCool. Yeah, they, yeah, he's like a pale kind of pinkish guy. He's got like, like shorts on. And is just playing like a flute, and he's got like a pig face. I like how Irish surnames survived in the galaxy far away. <laughs> I know, right? McCool. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I know. Billy McGrub, yeah. But even if you notice in the, you know, the new movie, there was cooler secondary aliens that weren't really exposed. And they will make figures of Oh, sure. They'll make them all. They'll make them all now uh, that Disney's in. A in... perfect example is when Finn's like, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to get a ride to the Outer Rim. Right and like oh these guys can secure you a passage and they're kind of like greasy criminals yeah yeah greasy criminal and skull you see this and red guy he has sort of android looking cool armor you know what I'm talking about he's with another guy they're at a bar yeah I mean I got I've only I've only seen the movie twice in theaters as so well, I'm, as I'm, well. I'm gonna have to see it again and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll know them all by heart eventually but uh, so uh, there, was, there was a backlash that. Uh, People were complaining there wasn't enough Ray merchandise, especially females and women. I, I had heard that there was a few sets that didn't have Ray in them, even though she's technically the main character of the movie. Uh, you know, a lot of people complaining, but hey, listen, you know, she's the main character of the movie. She should have her figures, but at the same time, um, maybe that was a a Disney thought that maybe little girls or little boys wouldn't buy those as much. But you never know what they're doing behind Honestly, closed doors well, for Disney's the money. Uh, Empire, End of, it. of course. Mm. And uh, I think they underestimated the female rea- positive reaction. I think it was like, oh, all those guys are going to want to right. buy Ray figures. No, you're going to have a huge amount of little girls wanting to be And what's funny with the little figure Rays. range was there's a story about when Ninja Turtles came out, the initial run of toys. Sure. And they were hugely massively popular, but amongst boys. So, none of the boys bought the April O'Neil action figure of the initial run. Right. The 1980s right. figures. It's a different like, time. That figure on eBay. Goes back. Bucks. Yeah, sure. It's the, it's a, Definitely. That's, no how, it always, no that's how it always is. People always buy, like, um, the most common toy and, buy, and they assume that it's going to be worth money. It's like, you know how many they made of that? <laughs> they made $10 million of that. You need the rare... One that was only was limited production and only came in blue, and all the the main production came in red or something. You know, it's always the limited production that's worth something because those are the rarest ones, and that's never the one anybody has when you look to go to a garage sale. Because you want to buy figures, you're gonna buy Darth Vader. You're gonna buy you're them gonna exactly. Buy you're not Skywalker. you're not gonna buy you know Ponda Baba or like the the um the short version of the alien that they only produced a very little of uh, in 1977. Well, Star you know, whatever Wars, the case if anything, is. is notorious for making the obscure character action. Uh, of course. Of course, they really invented that. that. I mean, you didn't really have, uh, you know, other worlds, like a, another, like, fake universe, like, that would create these, like, second and third level characters that really nobody, you know, like, would even think of, like, well, who's that guy's name all the way in the background if you pause for two seconds, you know? Star Wars was the first, uh, you know, property to do that. And secondly, uh, like, when you're pausing on a VHS at the time... You're not even gonna catch it. You only have six tries. To get <laughs> yeah. Image of this thing. I mean, that happens all the time. Like, I have some Star Wars figures over here that literally, like, you wouldn't like. I've seen the movie Star Wars a million times, so like, I I can tell you exactly where that was. But if a normal person seen it, you know, whatever, how many times they've seen, you know, I will. I've seen Star Wars ten times in my lifetime. They'd be like, that guy's in the movie. And I even have some figures in the, over here that I've seen the movie a million times. And like you said, like Sean just said that. You could pause it and still only get a blur of him. Like this particular guy. I have a guy with like a brain See, brain head. Never even seen this guy in my life. Right. Like, a, like he who honestly is looks like a Superman villain. Like he looks Brainiac. like Brainiac. Right. And he's got a brain head. To be honest with you, I couldn't even tell you what. what I'll make a guess. Go ahead. It's going to be inaccurate, but uh, he almost looks like a Cloud City. Type. You would be, you'd think that because maybe the outfit. The outfit looks classy. Kind of he's right? he's a cantina he'll, guy. Uh, he'll post a picture of him. Yeah, I'll post a picture of him. He's a cantina. He's a cantina now, guy. Very. Is this special edition? Because I no, have no he, recollection. No, he's regular edition. But where but, do you see Brain? It's impossible. He's I'm, in the distance. Like if you put like you like you, sh- is his shadow in the movie or? He's like a half shadow. Is that, you can't actually... even clearly see him like this. You know, I, I think where they got where they were able to create the mold for this figure was that he was in 
the um the Star Wars holiday special because they do a tank notorious the holiday. notorious Star Wars holiday uh, special because they do a sequence a cantina sequence and in that sequence they use a lot of the same puppets uh, so it's rehashed so they just like all right bring the bin that you have at ILM <laughs> bring that over here and then they used a lot of the same masks and shit and this was one of the masks they used in the movie but barely visible in the movie but you can clearly see him in yeah, the Star Wars I, holiday I, special I, I, Star Wars a majority of my life. Yeah. I want to say 28, 20 years I've been in the Star Wars kind of canon. Right. Never seen him in my like, life. Like, but really, though, Sean's right because before I started looking at figures, I couldn't even tell you where the hell that guy was. I mean, I just saw a figure of it. I'm like, who the hell is this? And then they show you like a little like, grainy still on the back of the card of the figure from the movie. It's like, I guess. <laughs> and then there's another one just like that too. This like female chick but you get the picture at this point is that you know star wars was the was the brand to make all this obscure stuff that like it's just they really capitalize on oh, the marketing massive to massive the nth level we discussed this so sure. anyway generally speaking the new movie what's yeah. your thoughts what you well, like, I, listen, you dislike? Like, like there i gotta you know if you look on rotten tomatoes it's got a 93 percent 4.1 out of 5 or i think it's 8.2 out of 10 um critic rating it's got 90 percent positive um regular people reviews uh or ratings and it's like all right so that says it all that's really good you do have a cross-section on the internet of people complaining they're complaining about all oh, the main characters are mary sue uh but the biggest complaint is that it's a rehash of a new hope well it is in a way when you yeah okay. right of sand planet Oh yeah, like they just reunite haphazardly, right? Um, but the, they're following the droid. They, the droid has something that everyone wants. The, they, in in this case, a map instead of plans. There's a a fight. A, 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 a older age character passes away. Yeah, the older wise character passes away. Um, there's a destruction of a massive. There's <laughs> a massive Death Star. If you really look at the plot line, yeah. If you look at the out sequence. the outer shell of the movie, yes, um, and that's kind of to be expected. I was expecting that going in. It felt like they were gonna take a safer route with this movie and just be like, "Well, let's not stray too far from the original idea of Star Wars, uh, and that is the hero's journey, which is a psychological underpinning where you have a hero." A reluctant hero, typically who's somebody who starts out and is like, well, I can't get involved, you know, either both, you know, her, she, uh, Ray is just looking to get her portions and, and survive and waiting for her family, whoever that is. Luke, oh, I have to help my family, you know, so, and they live it on a dirt planet. And then they both get sw swept in to a bigger thing and they get forced into this the hero's journey and that's both of these movies and that's why they are so similar i mean the other superficial similarities like the death star and all that i, I think they're they are pretty superficial did, did i think they needed a third death star and i'm not even going to call it star killer base because it is a third death star right it's the same shit but um do they need it no in fact when i first saw the star killer base on the tr on the um the poster i i, I kind of it actually got me nervous because like oh shit are they really going to do a third death star i was like i don't think that's a good idea you'll hurt i mean people complained about the second death star imagine what they're going to do about a third death star but at the same token it's like well you know what better way to make a super weapon than a than a big circular thing that could destroy everything you know but i hope they don't do it again though to be honest See, in a way i star. think they essentially want to do a piece with a younger generation that yeah for example my boss mentioned the other day that you know, he was a big Star Wars fan saw the movies when he was a kid with his dad sure and he tried his sons love the Star Wars games and all that type of stuff but when he tries to show them the original movies they can't watch it they're like what is this shit I'm, I, I don't know it's like playing a kid Atari they're not gonna fucking play right. it right well you, I mean so the kids are so ingrained in it that they'll play their Star Wars Infinity games and Battlefront and all this. Sure. They know, they know the gaming aspect, but right. the movie Because the gaming aspect has been here all along. It hasn't really left too much. So they... This movie's a way to introduce children and a younger audience to the Star Wars lore that are too technology ingrained right. to appreciate the older stuff. And uh, Plinkett made that point. Uh, Mr. Plinkett on the YouTube, if anybody follows him from Red Later Media, he said that on one of his... Um, one, I think one of the 12-minute reviews for one of the trailers, he said he, he was like one of his secret fears with that be new young audiences with these, you know, with their Transformer movies and the big explosions and their Avengers might find the old Star Wars is to be boring. And you figure a lot of these kids with their short ADD for, you know, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram attention spans, 
uh, would be the case. And it really, you know, because back in the day, you didn't need an older mind or, you know, anybody to love Star Wars. You could be a four-year-old or a 40-year-old and, and, and love the simplicity of it. And that's what a lot of people that maybe aren't into Star Wars don't understand, that it is just a simple story of good and bad and the hero's journey and really doesn't it's have much to do about opera, the temper. It is a space opera. It's space fantasy. It's not science it has fiction. aspects. Of the Wild West in a sci-fi Yeah, setting. you know, you have all these kind of genres mixed, you know, and you got everything, like, and Mark Hamill has said this, he's like, what's not to like? There's a wizard, there's a farm boy, there's a smuggler, you know, it's like, who's especially like a, you know, a cowboy, there's a princess, I mean, there's, there's bad guys, they're practically Nazis, I mean, there's all the, like, the fun, adventurous things so, that you have in there. It's funny when you mention uh, the Nazis, the, yeah. when he does the speech. Oh, right? that was very... Was, like, snowing, but it was ominous. Third Reich-esque. Had the same color scheme, the black red. Sure, and he's and he's he's. We will see the republic, and he's like eyes and are going nuts. They do a one arm salute if you notice. Yes, they use their left arm if you didn't notice. They use it was a left arm up like this, but not like a hile. It was like a like a fist it up. It was sure surreal. Oh sure. Comparable to sure. The, Symbolism and imagery. The symbolism is there, sure. It was strictly taken from Third Reich. Absolutely. Propaganda. Uh, yeah. An evil kind of menacing and, machine. You, you figure Kasdan and um, Abrams, like, that was their idea fully through and through. I mean, See, it, it's a character overlooked with General Hux. Hux. I, thought, I liked him. He'll be there next. He's He'll be there a, a modern Tarkin. Yes. He's a modern, like, younger, like, less, um, you know, Tarkin was more in control. No, H- for sure. Like, Tarkin. Tarkin was running the show. Vader knew not to fuck with him. Yeah. In fact, in the first, in episode four, New Hope, Vader was really talking to bitch. Vader, release him. Yeah, as you wish, you know. But if you notice, Kylo and Hux. No, they don't, like, have a, because they're kind of on the same level. Like, they're both, like, the same age, and they're both, like, um, you know, General Hux is more on, like, the administrative level of things, and you have uh, Kylo Ren, who's more on, you know, just the mysterious, uh, you know, spiritual end of more things. More mysterious is the number one Sith. Uh, mm, Professor Snoke, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, he is Supreme Leader questions, Snoke. Questions. Nobody knows. People think he's Plagueis. People think uh, so, uh, people have all sorts of ideas of what he is. Is really hard to say. I mean, I do hope his character somewhere fits in to be like, oh, it's that guy, and not be like, oh, just random bad guy. You know, well, I kind of hope, but unless they do that like right, which will say like, he's all scarred up. He's been into some battles, so who does he battle with? Did he battle with Sidious when Sidious uh, supposedly he's killed him? Palpatine in another, you know. What's I'm saying? Well, well, well Palpatine is supposedly, I, I killed Darth Plagueis in his sleep. Well, maybe you didn't kill Darth Plagueis. Maybe you just wounded him. Did he get into a battle with Luke? Maybe somewhere in between that nobody knows about. I mean, there's a lot of hints to why he's all scarred up already, you know, what what his deal is. All right, so another big question, uh, Ray's origins. Sure. Now, there's rumors there are many rumors. Obi Wan's granddaughter. Potentially. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that. I think she's more likely Luke's daughter. Um. So. so but the, even that's not set in stone that at all. I thought was a little foreshadowed. Luke was she had a little orange rebellion fighter doll in her little desert cove. Oh, did she? If you remember, there's a little orange doll. It looks like a typical like a rebel pilot. Well, she was living in the AT in the Adat Walker, right? She was her living cove, inside. Yeah. Well, her cove was the Attic Walker, right? I think it was it was inside the Attic Walker. Pretty sure it was, like the downed one. Pretty sure that's what the cove was. Okay, so let's say that's her cove. Okay. I didn't. I, I I was I was uh I'm only regurgitating what somebody else said because I thought it was just a I random didn't cove that too. Specifically, because uh, remember she's eating at the bottom of the foot. I think she actually lived in it with like well, the broken she was down. Certainly one. a scavenger. Don't yeah, her. well, of course, there are thirty portions. For the droid, but okay. So they she had a doll in there. See, I haven't gotten the chance to pause and I, look I at things like that. Detail. I noticed the doll. There's a little. I'm looking forward orange, to getting it on Blu-ray. Orange doll. Okay. Another thing that was pretty interesting, but like I I didn't have time to count, nor would I. Sure. Is you know the lines. Just, yes, the counting the days. Yes, yes, yes. Where where is that countdown from? Right. I'm sure there'll be some explanation. Or well, I mean, it's the countdown from how many days that she was dropped off there. And she was dropped off with the 30 portion creature because you see his arm is holding her, the little version of her, when she's like, come back. 
back in the in the in the really it, sad and all sad. I got to see that the second time around because I was I was pretty sure I saw that the first time and I saw it the very next day and I was like I'm gonna make a note to look at that and so it was his arm. First time we saw it together. It was we large, saw it together. It was a large group. Last Thursday. I mean uh, Thursday then. The, not more last more Thursday. Than a month ago. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> time flies. Like, but no, the the Thursday December seventeenth. Uh, so a long work day. A lot of drinks. <laughs> a lot of booze. And I honestly fell asleep at one point. For about oh, my God. Four to I five think that minutes, happened to Pete, too. Who was sitting next to me. Yeah. Um, friend Pete and also. And woke asleep. up simultaneously <sighs> in the consolo scene. Oh. Uh, gas. And I wake up, and I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, God. You, you woke up to Han Solo's death? I literally guess there's spoilers see, in this. See the, see, oh, yeah. And I was just beyond spoilers. Spoil. If you haven't seen the movie at this point. You're not interested. Like I seen like a week ago, somebody posted like, quote a spoiler and then somebody was on Facebook and somebody commented was like yo I haven't seen the movie yet and it's like yo not for nothing if you haven't seen the movie yet like you're not enough of a fan for me to care about you being spoiled like you kidding me it's After, been... you get, you're allowed two weeks for two spoiler. weeks max for something two like weeks this is a spoiler yeah right like here. I'll watch my lip for two weeks but it's over it's five six weeks now you are 14 days to see <laughs> something you like yeah you've you waited too long Sunday we were there or... night of yeah like if you like the movie you at least seeing it that weekend if you're not working see it the Monday something you know a couple days after 14 days there's a so max you know you never know home. yeah but about 14 days after that spoiler city sp- spoilers are open on the table if you're interested and you're pissed off then you're not actually interested you're not actually interested off. yeah exactly some yeah some kid who did it I think you, you know the kid I'm not gonna say his name but he, you uh, haven't seen it yet and it was like bro it's like January 20th like the movie came out over a month ago like shut up like you know what well, you're just trying to be like just busting chops like so, almost about an addict that bothered me was uh, so okay like they go into the rebel base and they're like let's destroy the star killer base how can are we are you sure you're up for this Finn, who's like a low-level piece of shit. He's a sanitation true, worker, yeah. Oh, I know all the schematics. Oh, easy. You just gotta go through here. This is how you do it. That bothered you? Why would this fucking generic stormtrooper, who's not even like, didn't even pass his psych test, because <laughs> clearly he was a pussy. Oh my god, slaughter. Like, if you're afraid of slaughter, you're not a stormtrooper. Well, he just thought it was the it was the, it was the right thing to do to say to help. What's it called? He didn't like that slaughter. But you're right. You would have thought like a, a lifetime of conditioning I think them. You should do some mental testing. Yeah. Right? Well, apparently, well, that was uh, what's her name said. It was his first, uh, you know, screw up or whatever. Uh, General, I mean, uh, Captain Captain No Use over there who had uh, five minutes of screen time. Captain Phasma. She says it to Huck. She was like, "This was his first oh, offense." Another one. Super hyped character did absolutely nothing. It was hyped in the marketing huge. I definitely thought she was going to have a bigger character. Especially that scene in the trailer where she's like slowly walking down the corridor with her gun. Like with purpose. It looks like she's going to be going out to do some battle. And, and she does nothing. you know. And whoever uh, who actually became a bigger, more fan love character was the stormtrooper with the right light, the ga- lightsaber. With the, oh, the lightsaber yeah. Awesome. Traitor! <laughs> yeah, everybody loves him on the internet. He's fucking awesome. He, he had a big following on the internet the last few days. Because I'm like, who is this weeks. guy? That, you know, it's a saber-esque device. Yeah, yeah, They don't have an actual name for at least not that I know. Yeah, it was some sort of... I think it was like a riot gear. It was like Stormtrooper riot gear, but I think is the figure. fucking battling. <laughs> and he's like adamant. He has pride. He was fucking yeah. great. It, it, he, he's a relic to the original Macquarie... A th- throwback to the original Macquarie drawings, which the stormtroopers actually had um, lightsabers and uh, and shields. So like this, because he had he, the, the character had a shield, he threw it down to fight with his thing, his arm. The sl- only other Empire sl- characters that I seen fight with lightsabers were the Royal Guard within comics and such. Sure, they have kind of crazy staffs. They have those vibro staffs or whatever. But those can actually they can block a lightsaber. lightsaber yeah. And, you know, I love those. The only time you see them in action at all in like the movies is the deleted scene of Return of the Jedi when Vader tries to get into Emperor's thing. Like when, in the scene in Return of the Jedi when Emperor's like, "I told you to wait on the command ship." Before that, there's a deleted scene where Vader tries to get in to the, the Empire, the Emperor's spire, and two royal guards won't let him in. And and the uh, which a double efforts guy, Grand Moff Jar Gerard, Vader chokes him out, and the two guards put up their sticks to like beef. This needs to be posted because I actually haven't seen this. You've never seen it? Oh, it's fun. It's like you know, fifth twenty seconds. That's the thing. The That's the only time you see them seen do the royal guard actually beef. In right? Do any other than in uh, Revenge of the Sith when Yoda just wh- whips them onto the wall? You know, when Yoda comes into the room, Master Yoda. They put the, they point their sticks at Yoda, and Yoda just tosses them like with Yoda one hand. Yoda essentially is 
the incarnate of Jedi. He's yeah. the most powerful. He's the most powerful Jedi, you know. Force yeah. being. Yeah. And again. But he had a tough time with Darth Sidious, though. He had a tough time against the Emperor. He actually, he technically lost the Emperor. Well, it's kind of like a Batman Joker. It's a yin yang. They're the 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 climax of both of their kind of movements within that energy. You know, negative, positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yin and yang. Yeah, you had Yoda with the uh, supreme level of positive energy, and then you have the Emperor. To be honest, with the if supreme Yoda level was to fight Vader, I think Yoda would took him. Yeah. Well, Vader was again, like Lucas says, Vader was really a half a man at that point. Once Vader was in the suit. He was ha- he was half of what he was originally, you know. He was just he was half man. He's more machine now than man. You know what bothers me? Shitty and evil. Vader being this kind of android character is you look at General Grievous, who has like superior android technology. Right, Grievous right, right, right. is awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's got four he arms, four sabers. He can do everything. Right. And Vader is just like archaic, yeah. slow moving. He had a lot of respiratory problems. Fucking vaporizer, you know? I know, because when you think about it, really, it's true, and that was supposed to be the throwback to, I think that was... Um, this is l- like 30 years... Yeah, prior it's, to... Uh, let's say 15 years prior to well, Vader's destruction. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, it's, it's, it's like 26. Grievous, yeah. Because right when Grievous died is right around the time that Vader got put in the suit. So... Yeah, that was the same year. In yeah, the, well, yeah, that time, because the same well, movie. Let's say Grievous got... His android self, 20 years before that, 15. Okay. Why is his technology right. with these separatists, you think the Empire would, would have, have better technology? Yeah. But he's just, and, you know, it's, well, it's funny is Grievous also had breathing problems. Maybe if yes. you're an android. Yeah, he's coughing and shit. I feel like. Well, Grievous was just like Vader, and I think it was both, like, that was. Lucas trying to mirror how Vader was half man, half. But Grievous was like some sort of alien freak, and he had, um, he just had essentially his organs. And his 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 head and his everything else was his face. Yeah, you that was see it. His eyes you see his, his eyes and his face and his lungs. Yeah, exactly. And then the, uh, his arms and his legs were you know robotic, uh, similar to Vader. Vader's just essentially a torso and a head. His arms are cut off. His legs are cut off. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You would have thought they would have been able to make him a little more <laughs> a little so more actually, physically capable. The grievous race was Kalish. Okay. Um, what do they look like without the fucking so, the whole guard? I'll show you a picture here. They're sand people esque. They're a little more human, mm. but they still wear masks. Oh, so they, they kind of almost is look that like a African mask or a bone. Yeah, they look like an African African warrior. tribesman kind of deal. So they ha- they're um they're humanoid. They're humanoid. Honestly. They have arms and legs, but they um so they, they cover you, their face. So you're saying they could have gave Vader four arms? <laughs> like I'm they had Grievous. That, I'm saying Grievous is. Not so it, is that a mask or is it like a bone face? No, it's a mask. Are you sure it says it's that? Positive, it's a mask. What I'm do sure. they got under there? <laughs> what do they got under yeah, that? It's thing? like the sand people. It's a mystery. Yeah. Um, so there's other pictures, but essentially, Grievous is my favorite characters in the prequels. The crap. So. The crapples. So here's their. Race. I don't even know who my favorite character would be in the prequels. There's, I'm just gonna say the Emperor. There's both of them. Uh, there's another one, but that's essentially what the race looks like. So they're sand people esque. Oh yeah, a I, little. I have that figure. The uh, the Prey Mantis. He's, he's one of the uh, guys in the. Again, no, I have no clue. Who <laughs> he's Prey in Mantis. there. He's in one. Of, he's in the. Uh, he's in the cantina. Oh God, I'm. This thing's full on like dominoes. There it is. Yeah. Hey, bud. I didn't know. I didn't know you had this fucking. Yeah, he's in the background. He's just a Prey Mantis that's in the uh, cantina. Keed Kak. Yeah, he's got a little stand. This guy. Yeah, he needs to stand. Also cool full skirt. Down. Yeah, he's got his little hula skirt. They're Hawaiian. <laughs> I, These bugs are Hawaiian. I think. Pro- see, what happened is when Kenner was making a lot of these figures, um, and they had not too much because there wasn't too much like, um, uh, like like pictures or anything to go by when they were designing the prototypes for these. Like for for at least a New Hope, not the same for Return of the uh, for Empire Strikes Back. So when they made a lot of these figures for a New Hope, and they were like, all right, we're gonna make this this figure now. And they were like, all right, well, we don't have, like, you know, any pictures or anything. Because they didn't take pictures. Like, that, you know, the movie was, like, a quick, fast, haphazardly done production. So there wasn't, like, these production stills of all these secondary characters. They ended up doing it after Star Wars was a big hit. But so when Kenner was making them, they're like, oh, we don't have, like, we don't know what the bottom half of this character looks like. So Lucasfilm was just like, oh, just, just make it up. So a lot of times that's what happened. So with this one, because, like, really... All the picture that they had was just the, the torso up, so they didn't know what his look, legs looked like. So they just gave him like, let's just give him a friggin' dress. Well, here we go. It's also the '70s, so it's well, yeah. But that 
fucking hula skirt's hilarious. Yeah, it's funny. It's like a big like frame mantis with a hula skirt. Uh, and I, in fact, Mark Hamill makes fun of it in one of the interviews. He's like, "Oh, it's just like a giant cricket." <laughs> so, fun of all another like question of characters. mine. Actually, my cousin who's listener, he mentioned it to me. Cool. Um, R two D two. Mm-hmm. Stagnant. Looks like a museum fucking relic. Yeah, it's like a skull just, just sitting there. Really start has it worked in twenty years? It starts working. Oh uh, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Fucking map. It's like. Why did he start working? Well, a lot of people have complained about that. You're right. The internet is uh, is talking about that as one of the, uh, quote, plot holes. Um, but to, to be fair, all of these movies have plot holes. They're not flawless movies, even though Empire Strikes Back is regarded as the best sequel of all time, along with, I think, Godfather 2. I don't think you could find a better sequel than either of those movies. I think they're neck and neck. A lot of people might say Godfather 2. Massively um, solid. But, both but yeah, both of them are like... And both of them are not... Are even Godfather 2 and um, The Empire Strikes Back, neither of them are flawless movies. But not using that as an excuse. About this plot hole, a lot of people are saying, well, do you remember the, this, the part of the... Um, of, it was in the trailer and also in the flashback when Luke touches his robot hand to to R2. They say um, that might have something to do with it and also that R2 might have been programmed that when the map comes back, all the, the lights go on and he turns back on. So that's what people are saying. We don't know. I haven't read the, um, the novelization to The Force Awakens yet, but that's what a lot of people are saying in regards to that as of right now. We're looking at it as a plot hole, but it might not be a hole. So when Luke's in this Iceland-looking remote planet, he's also master programmer. He can <laughs> no, he's using the Force to uh, to like touch R two. You know, if you see like, because he touches R two, and then R 2s light changes on his like eye. I didn't think much of it either, but then a lot of people I didn't said notice that. it till my cousin Billy mentioned it. Uh, secondly, which I'm very interested, and in, this story will be divulged relatively soon mm-hmm. uh, through Marvel's. The tentacles of Disney, sure, owning Marvel Comics, Star Wars being produced by them. They're doing a one-shot, relatively long comic explaining C-3PO's right arm. I heard about that. Yeah, and I'm actually very interested. From what I, I from what I understand, at the end of the movie, the right arm was gone. Though he had his regular arm back. Is that is that true? I had heard that I recently. Didn't notice that. I I had heard by the end of the movie he had his regular arm back. I know within a marketing perspective, when it comes to action figures and such, the right arm is very prominent in all C-3PO merchandise. Sure, sure, sure. All the uh, new merchandise. And uh, all of the new marketing has had the red arm, and it gets mentioned in the movie. It's not like they go, they brought you. To, oh, you! I, I didn't know if you'd recognize me with my new red arm. You know. So I, I don't know why he has the red arm. Yeah, they, I, they're doing the comic book for it. So, and so that that'll answer that. I don't think they needed to answer in the movie funny itself. With droids, especially, is C three PO loses his limbs consistently all the time. There is, bro. Oh, well, if I had like, my legs, I wouldn't be in this ridiculous position. But I'm wondering about his schematics, which Anna can create. <laughs> and oh, God. I hate old, that shoehorn. Old tattooing there. Um, so it's all on his head? Does he have a, a, a brain? Cause it's uh, C-3PO? Like, it's yeah. on his head, then. Yeah, he's got a hard drive and a, and a CPU. It's all in his fucking little skull. In the skull his itself? Skull, skull. I guess, yeah. I, I, if you made a robot, where would you put the the CPU? Would you put it in in his ass? <laughs> put it somewhere like you know, in his thigh or something. <laughs> really? Discreetly. What if he uses it loses his thigh? I don't know. <laughs> hey, uh, nature got it right and put our brains well, in our ass. Shoot something, right? Gun, <laughs> you shoot it right now. I'm shooting a fucking thigh. I this guess is not. I'm mobilized, but if I'm shooting a fucking robot. Hey, I don't know. I I'm not an engineer that that creates robots, so I don't know where I put the skull. Nature puts them in your brain, so I don't know. <laughs> hey, it's the, a headshot is the hardest shot to make. So, Kylo Ren, what was your thoughts of him generally? I like him. You know, a lot of people are crying, saying he's a whiny bitch. He, like, this is the character that Anakin should have been in the prequels. Like, an angry kid. Who's just, like, or a young man, I should say. He's angsty. Angsty young man. But he was, like, Anakin was just fucking... Whiny bitch. Horrible. Like. Well, this is what Lucas. You know, this they is what learned. Lucas. They learned. Yeah, Lucas tried and they failed, and they learned from that. And they said, "All right, we're gonna do similar, but better. We're gonna make him like his grandfather. Help me, grandfather." So he's like that. He's mirroring at. It. It's like poetry. It rhymes, as Lucas says. That was says. an awesome scene when his Vader's like melted. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me, grandfather. You know, it's yeah. good. It's good. And and he looks good. more. He looks 
up to more the melted Vader helmet than his actual biological father. Yeah, he's looking because there's no skull in the mask, right? It's just the mask. It's a melted, it's a melted mask. It's just the melted mask, but there's no physical bones in it. Now, how did that mask get acquired? Maybe right, they're gonna. I think they're gonna divulge that soon in some I form feel or another. Like someone got a lot of credits. Yeah, to to the Star Wars that. universe credits are the currency. The currency, sure. So you're like. What is some Ewok is like a millionaire? Like, <laughs> no, oh, yeah, right. I found this. Oh, let me get money for it. No, you. F- I. I mean, the way I always imagined that when I first saw that they got his mask was that like the emperor, the empire, maybe went down to Endor to to because remember the rebels are having their party there after they blow up the Death Star. So the remnants of the empire go down. The rebels dis- leave. Luke doesn't take the corpse with him. They go down and inspect the empire, and then they oh, get they the, burned corpse. the corpse. Yes, they burn the corpse, but. They left the, sh- the remains well, he there. Took the mask off. Yeah, yeah. It's actually technically it's in that little. It's in the burnt pile. The little battle base they had. When in Endor. Because when he takes the mask off, he just throws it aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you look when the when the whole suit is on fire, when Luke puts burns in Endor, when they have Vader's funeral, uh, the mask is on. The face. He puts the mask back on and burns so the body that, with the what mask that means on. To me, is a rebellion, folks. Sold it on the black market. <laughs> Maybe. I'm thinking, all right, Empire, quick, easy. You're a stormtrooper, you want to make some side money, boom, quit sure. your job. If you're a stormtrooper and you're selling a Vader mask, it's like selling Abe Lincoln's hat. Like, you can get fucking millions of dollars. No, you're right. It's quite an... It's a, it, you're it, it is like selling Abraham Lincoln's hat. It is a similar artifact, uh, historical artifact. This is Darth Vader's helmet. Darth Vader, Lord of the Sith. You can retire from your empire doings. Yeah, you could you could have a cushy uh, buy a nice little condo. In a cu- a, cu- City. a cu- <laughs> That's right. Get yourself uh, a nice ship. Get yourself a nice uh, retire. Yo. That's right. Retire in Cloud City amongst the clouds. So you, re- you surely lo- belong was, here amongst the clouds. A crafty rebellion folk that was like, hey, you think so? I believe I had heard recently. Vader's he- this is Vader's helmet. This is, you can't get this. Is a replica? Donating it to the new order. <laughs> no, he's selling it to. A, a black market fellow who is then reselling it. So that is a possibility um, along with uh, what I had said. But but I'm pretty sure in some form of um, media or another, I don't know if it's going to be a comic or whatever, that they're going to divulge how the mask was acquired. And also... I think me and you are bringing this topic up. Cause this you think is... so? Well, well, I know for a fact they're bringing up how the lightsaber was acquired. Luke's lightsaber? That's easy. Vader's mask, I think, is a more random. Well, how, maybe so, but how How do you do, say it's easy? Luke's fucking hand got cut off in the Cloud okay, City and so it flew to the ground. the alien's name? The old female alien, the glasses, the, the goggles. You talking about Maz Kanata? Sure. I don't know if it was just me or she, or not even old black woman. She had <laughs> well, it, it was played by Nabita Luongo, who was a young black girl. There you go. I, I knew it. <laughs> you didn't know who it was played by? I know it was Nabita Luongo. The girl from 12 Years of Sleep. It had, uh, I think it was seven years, of sl- whatever. Twelve years of slave. <laughs> Regardless of slavery, it okay. had an ethnic vibe to me. She, that alien. Yeah, as a lot of the creatures in Star Wars are taken from some like Asians. Oh, we are. Oh, uh, the Japanese. Yeah, yeah, we are Asian businessmen. Oh. Yeah, or or like you Tossin know, Raiders are like Arabs. Like. <laughs> well, they call oh, them. Oh, oh. They call them sand people. <laughs> but, exactly. But uh, what, about, what are the Wookies? I don't know. They're like Harry and the Henderson. They're not Bigfoot, sorry. They, they certainly look like Bigfoot. That, I mean, and it was taken after George Lucas's dog, Indiana, who was named after Indiana Jones. G- George Lucas had an Alaskan Malamute, and when he would sit in his sitting big Alaskan Malamute, he'd sit and drive in his car, and the the dog would get in the passenger seat, and the dog would be sitting. It was a big dog, so it would be like as tall as him. So that's where he got the the idea for it. Well, wouldn't it be cool if I had like a you know? An, a uh, humanoid or any anamorphic dog. So, speaking of Chewbacca, people also make comments about his reaction when he sees Leia yeah. after Han died. Sure. He just kind of nods like, yeah. But, yeah, so his reaction essentially... Um, but, but, well, listen, when when Han gets stabbed by Kylo Ren and dies, I mean, Chewie had a pretty... The, the right reaction. He flipped out. He had, when it gave up one of his most vicious roars he's ever given in all the movies. <gasps> and then he shoots him with a bowcaster. And, you know, blast him right in his armor. And a lot of people complain, you know, that, oh, that bowcaster was killing people the whole movie. And uh, all he did was make Kylo Ren bleed. Was, well, number one, he did shoot 
Kylo Ren in like his chest armor, and number two was from far away, and number three, Kylo Ren was wounded pretty rough from that shot. So it's like, did you want him to like fly off the, you know, the railing and die? Or you know, I think it was appro- as appropriate as they could have made it for a movie without having to, you know, f- have him fly off that tightrope and die. Well, he wanted this kind of Rambo mode, you know, boom, boom. Yeah, well, yeah. After that, snipe. After that, um, yeah, Chewie flipped out, and then it was kind of like just almost like self-sacrifice. You started blowing the place up, you know, like without any. It was like, oh, you know, everybody started to get uh, thrown around after Chewie because they put those the detonators down, and Chewie blew them up. Uh, and Chewie was like, screw this, blow this place up. They killed Han. You know. Now, what do you think his usage is going to be? Chewy afterwards. I think he'll be. I think he'll still he'll be. Still be relevant. I think he'll still be in the movie, whether it be because I think now uh, he'll be more secondary at this point. Well, he's been secondary. Well, always, but without Han, who the f- what is he gonna follow? Fucking Ray around? He might. He might follow Ray. Don't think Ray would be like, yo, like give me space, fuck off. Uh, well, you see, a lot of people are assuming now that the next movie is gonna follow kind of how Empire did. It's like, well, Ray's gonna be training just like Luke was, and Finn and Ray are going to be, uh, I mean, Finn and uh, Poe are going to be, like, on the run doing stuff because you figure Captain Phasma is going to be looking for Finn because well, he's a traitor. Finn's also, and like, healing, essentially. Well, you would figure the time between the, the movies that Finn should be healed, okay. maybe have some sort of robotic okay. back or something, well, you know. Some Star Wars sort of... soon, but another sure. issue I had was, so, Finn, right? Yeah. He has interactions with Poe, they escape. Mm-hmm. And... Paul is nowhere to be found. Assumed dead. The the the, the fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he's gone, disappears. Yeah. Why is his jacket there? What did he just take his jacket off and then teleport? Uh. No, maybe did he take it off in the cockpit? Not that I know of. I think you're just making uh, assumptions. There. Well, I mean that. I uh, well. I, well, listen, because he does say, I, no, I got blown back and I was far away. Okay, but if he so took the... As I'm getting thrown through this. No, maybe... Most of maybe, force, let me take my jacket off. I don't know. I, I mean, so I can make... It's such a little tidbit. You're going to worry about that. There's a million of those in a new home. You know? Like, that's something that you shouldn't well, even care gave about. gave Finn, like, a fashion outfit. Like, oh, he's wearing a cool Well, it was either jacket. that or he was going to be, like, wearing a black leotard because he wasn't wearing a Stormtrooper armor at that point. All yeah, I had the black that undergarment. Look terrible. It would look ridiculous because he only has the black undergarment, you know, so it's like, of course you got to give him at least a jacket. Right, so to tie the Star Wars all you know, tie, Yeah, let's tie it all up in a neat bow here. Generally speaking, were you pleased with it? Uh, I'm, sa- I'm totally satisfied. As far as I'm concerned, Star Wars is back. Uh, is it a perfect movie? No. Is it a completely entertaining movie with great new characters that you could connect with? Yes. Am I excited to know where the story goes next? Yes. And these are the most important things. Is it, like, again, I mean, did I, I some people going in were expecting the best movie ever made. Was it the best movie ever made? No. Is it a great action movie, you know, that you're going to enjoy and you're going to have characters to connect with, with the prequels lacked. Yes, you're going to have all that. You have all the the practical effects, you have all the, the old characters back, all these new plucky characters that you could enjoy and the new, the new uh, you know, the new kids in, into loving Star Wars can connect with and, you know, everything's ha- happy and we're going to enjoy Star Wars moving forward and enjoy the, the story uh, as it grows. I agree. I liked it. Yeah. I see a second time to fall. I'm giving it grass. four point Three out of five stars. I think that's very fair. I'm not giving a five out of five because the perfect movies isn't I'll perfect. I'll give it a four, but four is fine. Four is fair. I mean, four I is good. Four is great. It. Yeah, like I liked it better the second time. I said the first time I saw it after seeing Han die. I mean, there's a character I've loved my whole life. It's like wow. Now I'm in a world where Han Solo's dead. Like I don't know how I feel about this. Like I'm a little, you know, I'm a little bitter about that. It was like you know, kind of like a friend dying, and then the next day I watched it again, and I I got over it, and I loved the movie, and and that's where I am. So great! Now. It was a step in the right direction. Definitely, it was a good building block for the Star Wars for the story to expand. And they've already said that the next one's going to be darker, more character involved, more shit. Surely going on. you got to you got to lighten it to keep the you know you right. got to make the children interested, etc. Absolutely. So I'm happy with that. And, I, and a lot of people are saying that it might go well. It's going to be like Empire now because you're going to have Ray. Being lo- tr- doing Jedi training and the other two running away from Captain Phasma like they were running away from like Boba Fett or something. And I'm like, not necessarily. You know, Ray has probably already started I would her training. Compare that lesbian to Boba Fett. <laughs> Boba Fett's no, awesome. Boba Fett's miles above. I mean, she could have been a badass character. She was completely underused, in my opinion. Like, you know, she looked obviously great. Everybody was excited to yeah. see her do something. 
but nothing happens. So, um, so another thing going on is the Pokemon 20th anniversary. Yes, 20 years of Pokemon now. Pokemon did begin in 1996 in Japan, and this is the uh, 20th year anniversary. And Pokemon, to me, is more reminiscent of childhood. Absolutely. Well, age. both for me, for Star Wars. I'm, all these things I've loved for so long, but Pokemon in particular, we were huge so I've been fans idle of that within, essentially. Like, I did buy the 3DS. Uh, well, that's, that's the brunt of our... Like, we were in the perfect age range when that became... A massive uh, world worldwide phenomenon. And me, you were uh, well regarded card players. In our yeah, time. I was the I was. You could look me up. I was the <laughs> number one Pokemon player in the world at one I point. Think I was like eighteen. Or Sean something. was in the top twenty players we in the world. We were prominent figureheads. But, yeah, we were totally like so. re- that's that that's a going to show how much we were into Pokemon. You know, we were like you know into it. I mean, we're in the perfect age range to be in that. The cars were ages sound. ten the years old, played, eleven years obviously old. Obviously, the game's the starting point. Sure, I mean, we started with the video. The way I started was that, I mean, I had saw, like, like people were talking about it with the Nintendo Power magazine. It was coming out, and I was like, oh, all right. Yes, I, I didn't like it the very first. I and remember then, specifically, uh, Class of Rise, Michael Bennett was his yeah. name. He had Pokemon Power, which was an insert in Nintendo Power magazine. Oh, so they had their own little uh, so had Arthur, version of it. Like that must have been the, uh, the, the big promo to start it off in America. And I remember being in it. It was in eighth grade uh, math class, and they were like. It's probably oh, earlier. It's probably earlier than eighth grade, Sean. I think it was. We, I think might it was have eighth been. Grade, ma- might have been. I think it was. I, Pokemon started for us really in the sixth grade, in my opinion, because it was or, or like because it was not. It was ninety. I remember it was math class. It was ni- nineteen ninety eight, late ninety eight, which is really when that yeah, started. They have for me. to alter from U.S. audiences. It was super jappy when it yes, first yes, came. Yes, 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 yes. So they they did. Well, it took a few years. It started in '96. It became a huge thing there, and then they took it over here, and marketed it, and it Dragon worked. Dragon Ball Z came out like eight years for me to, to our shores. Yeah, it took a while. Exactly. Uh, any Dragon Ball Z episode you saw here were always years. A lot of those things came out in the '80s. Yeah, maybe '89 or something. The you know back into the Pokemon. I just remember seeing that. that what you said, the Nintendo Power insert. Right, right. That was like and the first big like, marketing what the for. Fuck is that? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah. The game came out and Red and Blue. I didn't like it at the very first. Like you saying, like the first thing you saw, they were all big on it, and I was like, "What is this thing? Japanese characters, creatures? I don't know." And then everybody was so into it. <laughs> Excuse me. I ended up getting. The Game Boy Blue for it, and and then I, that you was it for me. Yeah, sinker. that was it for me. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker is right. I remember playing that game religiously. Sure, started with I the video game, you. and then the TV show, and of course, and and all sorts of all the toys and everything Pokemon, and of course the card game. You know, like the like, card game really accentuated. Cause I yeah. got that. I got, well, the, the card game became massive in its own right. I would think the card it, game it's even regarded really as became, a fad. In, you know, sure, and, I mean it, it was known then. Even my dad would say, "You know, this is just a fad, right?" And I was like. Yeah, even, I got it as an eleven year old. It's like, yeah, I'm assuming this will go away, like the Tamagotchi, and Tamagotchi, the and Spice Girls, and the Beanie Babies, and exactly, uh, and the Furbies, like anything like that. Like you, you know that they're just a fad because they're hugely popular and then they disappear. And it's like, oh, remember that? Twenty years later, it's as strong as ever. Yeah, it, it's just it's funny that it it now I'm, obviously it's had its huge down points and like well, I think generationally it's changed. Like obviously the kids that were eleven then, me and you are not really into it really as much now, but you have a huge other generation of that are po- widely popular like younger kids. But and, and, and you still, and it's caught on a segment of each of those ages. Well, I like that it's still very much active. Yeah, yeah. Younger. It's an afterthought for me. I mean, I don't look at like new Pokemon stuff, but this new 20th... Uh, no, it 20th, made me look back. Right, we're looking back on it, and it's... And, uh, uh, no, they're making even uh, the new... They're remaking the new cards, aren't they? The, uh, they're, they're making, in Japan, in we, Japan. Well, they're not in doing Japan, America? Japan's a bigger following here. Of course, still, yeah. For Nintendo, Pokemon's one of their giant, biggest arcs. It's one of their cash cows. And it's absolutely, huge. absolutely. It's still I, one of their huge cash cows. It's so. one of the reasons, I I mean, I bought a 3DS. I yeah. have it primarily with Zelda games, but I sure. play when I was traveling. I don't sure. play as much Lo- I know a lot of people that have the 3DSs, and I mean, one of the games that they're always whipping out will be Pokemon. That is the Pokemon. Yeah, what are they, what are they up to now? Uh, S- Crystal and... Generation Oh, Generation Y six, or something? I believe. Oh, oh, yeah, I couldn't even... Six generation of games. The last Pokemon games I played on Nintendo, or on the game... You're telling me Gold and Silver. Gold and Silver were the last ones I played, yeah. What year is that? It's it's 2001? Right yeah, because what happened was, 
I, 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 that, when I got them, I was already well, way too into the card game to even have any time to play the video game. But I ended up getting them and was liking them. And it's just a rehash of Blue and, I, I mean, I played They're Blue. All, Blue all they're all the same, same thing. It's all RPG. You get, you get your badges. Yeah. And then you get your, you get your starter. You level off. It's an RPG. It's we all, fire, yeah, fucking sure. water. But I played them all. I played, I beat Blue, I beat Red, I beat Green, I beat Yellow. Green but the one was Pikachu only follows you. In Japan. Well, I had the I had, I had the Japanese one. I had that one. I had them all. I go into Game Gear and get all the specialty ones. But I had the green one. Game Gear, GameStop. Uh, ga- yeah, Game Champ. Game Champ. Game Champ. Even yeah. before GameStop. I think Game Champs are out of existence. Probably. Yeah, they're all GameStop. GameStop took them over them. Yeah, they absorbed them. Small stand Yeah, but I, I beat them all. I had uh, the the yellow one in, Jap- in in Japanese before it even came out in English. I had it in, in Japanese because it was sick. Because the little Pikachu followed you around. Yeah, it was cool. So that was like, oh, you know, it was a big, big deal. And then Gold and Silver, I guess, came out. Uh, and that was the last ones I played. I so, beat them, and that was and that was it. I, I think that somebody stole them from me. I blew yellow. Somebody stole them from me. And uh, I think I, his name is David Curran. <laughs> somebody stole them from if me. He's listening. He stole my deck as well. He's a thief. <laughs> so a Texan thief. I think he's Mormon too. <laughs> he's listening. Stop. And uh, so we, um, yeah, that was it for me. Uh, so I don't know how many. I'm sure they've come out with tons of video games after. So. Again, I play. And the Pokemon Snap. Remember Pokemon Snap? Awesome. I was discussing this the other day. It's a, you know, it's fun for the 20 minutes that you play the game. I remember when yeah, I got... you the, go through the game in t- two hours. It was like June of maybe 2000, and I waited for the pre-sale, and then I finally came in. It was an early Saturday, 9 a.m. The second Toys R Us opened that morning, 10 a.m., whatever it was. I get it. It was a, a warm and sunny summer. I should have been out playing... You know, sports. I come in. <laughs> I I get the. I was. It was one of those summer days. It's like I'm gonna play this all day. I beat the game. It, I get it. At, like home at like ten thirty. The game was beat before noon, and I was like, wow. Nah, it was longer than an hour and a half. It literally took an hour and a half, bro. The game was over. Let me tell you something. Pokemon and, and then and then it you can take the it pictures. Has a cult following. To this day. <laughs> I have it here. People I still have it. it. People regard it very fondly. That was like, oh, that game sucks. Everyone's like, Pokemon Snap, awesome. Yeah. Well, anyone that I just. Disc- I was discussing this girl the other day, and she said, "Oh my god, I remember Pokemon Snap. I didn't like, but a game of I love Pokemon. Well, I, I mean, if Pokemon. you're, I mean, the gameplay. Like, I like the gra- like for the time, the graphics were good. It was very hands on because Pokemon at times is very two D. Yeah. Well, that's it. So anytime you got to see like a 3D Pokemon, like an N64, like for Pokemon Stadium, I I even bought Pokemon Stadium 2, the Japanese version, which was Pokemon Stadium 1 in America, and it was the same thing. Another awesome game. Yeah, and I like so I got I had that in Japan because they they only took forever to come out, so I always bought those. And um, but like you say, like it was a big deal to see these Pokemon like in a 3D instead of just seeing them, you know, on 2D Speaking on your of Pokemon Snap. Game Boy. Remember Blockbuster these machines? Well, of course you were. That's integral to Game Snap. I mean, game, uh, Pokemon Snap. So you, you essentially bring, I believe it was your actual cartridge. Bring game. the cartridge to this Blockbuster giant Video. Machine. And it was a big. It's about like, four foot tall. Well, machine. No, it was bigger than that. It was like a full size arcade machine. It looked machine. like a, a phone booth. Almost. It looked like a phone booth or an arcade it machine. Had it like looked like a. It had like a 64 controls stuff yeah, out of it. Right. And then you essentially you put your cartridge in and then you're able to print the pictures that you took in the game on actual and they came out stickers. Like glossy stickers. Yeah, like nice like high quality and stickers, cost you a couple bucks. It might have been 3 4 dollars. Yeah, dollars. yeah, it wasn't time. expensive. No, it was they a couple were bucks exclusively in blockbusters. Yes. And I vividly remember going into, I think I might have, I did it at least once but I did certainly print out the uh, stick oh I have some um, one of my uh, I have uh, my old Pokemon binders right here and I have some of the old pictures that I took because you it's the pictures that you took in the game so those of Pokemon so those exact pictures you print out and you get you know you bank stickers you have you put, put your stickers everywhere but you could actually pretty sure you could still get the Pokemon snap I machine they're pretty pricey at this point, and majority of the people that own them were like ex blockbuster managers. Exactly, like, shit like that. We're gonna throw this out. He's like, put it in my truck, and then like put it in their basement. Let me, yeah, pretty much. Let me see if I have so, any on that. I know I've seen them. I don't know if there's any on now. There's none on now. Um, there has to be like probably less than a hundred in existence. I would very say. little. I mean, I know I've seen them on eBay before. I can't even. There's none on eBay right now. Oh, it was a Pokemon Snap Station. Let's see it. What's it? Again, it's very limited. It's strictly U.S. Wow. All they have is... Oh, they have the kiosk. Let's see it. Is this, is this it? 975. Pick up free. Uh, it's in Texas, though. This is it. Sean, take a look at this. Is it, it's 1G? It's not, it's 975. Uh, pick up only. It's not is bad. It, is it working? Can di- is it yeah, working? Yeah, working. Look it. That uh, is exactly how I remember. It's 
Pretty fairly. I'm gonna put this up on the. the I'm page gonna here. put this on the Retro Kid Facebook page. Look at this thing. Not mint. It's a little dinged. Yeah, there's some discrepancies, but thousand but, bucks. But thousand bucks. You offer him six hundred. Well, it's a good deal. I don't roll for it. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever have a man cave, this is going in there. I don't live the Donkey Kong. This. Oh, Donkey Kong. That, but, you would uh, think that this really wouldn't put out, really, because, uh, I mean, you probably have to find new printer paper and ink, though. Again, the ink and... Where are you going to find the printer paper and ink? Let's see what the description says right here. It prints stickers still! Yeah, still, it's probably five. <laughs> Solo print. Uh, I know, right? This is a... T look at... Wow, look at this. Like, he pulls it all out. Look at this. Because it had, like, a little TV. Oh, wait. Th th yeah, I this wasn't just an N64 com system. Look at all this sh electronics yeah, in it. It's definitely, it looks like an arcade cabinet. It, that's what I thought it looked like. Yeah, it looks like an arcade cabinet. So, with it, did I just keep on the Pokemon context there. They're kind of modernizing. You can print without the card. See YouTube. My price is nine seventy five. It's like, uh, <laughs> not everyone can afford a 1969 Mustang Fastback or a Wurlitzer Jukebox. Therefore, only a few can own their own Pokemon Snap stations. Maybe you. <laughs> That's funny though. It's right. it, for, for that price. It's not even that to bad. Finish on the post. The last yeah, yeah. Let's finish it up. I want to mention the Pokemon. <laughs> I'm gonna post this up. Pokemon Go. Sure. So Nintendo kind of wants to get into this app market of sure, which is digitized tremendous. phone games and such, which is massive, by the and way. This Pokemon Go is a very intriguing concept. Yes, uh, yes, yes. So it's still working out. It should be released within at some point, 2016. Probably, the, I'm guessing towards Christmas time. Yeah, they're uh, working out the kinks on it. Um, so essentially, you could catch digital Pokemon in the world. Yeah. In other words, um, there'll be like rare Pokemon that you can only catch, like Sean mentioned earlier, in Machu Picchu. Like you have to go to Machu Picchu to actually catch that so particular Alaska, Pokemon. You could, you Alaska. Alaska. Or the or so, uh, the Galapagos Islands or Galapagos something. Galapagos like Islands, exactly. You go to Galapagos Islands to catch Articuno or some shit. Or something, exactly. Now, Dragonite I feel like or some there's shit. There's going to be a, a certain incentive to pay in game money. And you ain't never heard of freemium, Sean? Of course there will be. So, but this is my prediction. Where does the money you come from? You heard it here first on Ratcho Kid. Shows us Sean's prediction right here. How it's going to work is you purchase Pokeballs and such. That's how it's going to work. Sure. So sure. if you want to buy a Master Ball, it's going to be like 20 bucks. Exactly. Exactly. Because you might not be able to catch... You'll have to pay the 20 bucks to catch the Articuno. So, exactly. You see a fucking Mewtwo, which the odds are... Slim. Never. You throw your fucking... Little fifty cent great ball. Yeah, yeah, your great. Laugh at you and your, run away. Yeah, your great ball is not very effective. You have to pay twenty dollars for that fucking master ball. People will do it. Why wouldn't they? You see, I mean, because that's going to be a rare item. You might even be able to sell that because I'm assuming you'll be able to trade on Pokemon uh, Go. Trading and battling is essential to Pokemon game. Naturally, so you're going to have to do it. So you figure they'll be able to sell those things on eBay for more money or whatever. You know, there'll be a secondary market to uh, oh, buy I'm them. I go to Galapagos. I can trade. <laughs> exactly, like like four hundred dollars for an Articuno or some shit, like on a secondary market. You'll see that happening. I'll bet money on that. And I think it'll be a whole new aspect of Pokemon tourism. Absolutely, they'll they'll uh, have a setup for that kind of thing. That so people you go to Staten Island and catch <laughs> Mox, get Grimers. Mox Grimers and the other ga uh, whatever any, the ghastly, all the ghastly, other ghastly, any poisonous, any poisonous scum Pokemon you'll be able to get here. Shit. Low level scum Pokemon, Done. you'll be able to get in, in the the clutches of our our hometown. Um, but yeah, so that should be a fun thing, and the app market is tremendous now. And Listen, Nintendo's trying to capitalize on I'm something. I'm certainly interested in. It. Yeah, I'm gonna take a gander at it. Is there's it a free a, app? It's like a weird. Uh, kind of wrist-looking watch type of thing with a Pokeball on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to look more into Pokemon Go myself. And if that's the case, I'm not going to be wearing a Pokemon <laughs> watch no, I'm, out at work or no, we're out at, at anywhere, the bar, essentially. Or at dinner with... Uh, any, you know, any public forum, I'm not wearing a Pokemon watch. But if you need be, I'll put it in my pocket if it's, right. if, the, if it's that amusing. But I'll certainly give it a go with that. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, sure. Um... Okay, so uh, we'll talk about one or two more things um, before we head out. We got, uh, what do you think about the new trailers, The uh, particularly the, um, the Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad trailer? Man, the Joker, he, it's, I'm more and more excited. Uh, do you think he's going to be very prominent, or do you think Will Smith's going to steal all the spotlight? 
Well, what would you well, think of the trailer? He wants to steal his holiday for the Oscars or this nonsense <laughs> piece of shit. Yeah, know. that's just that, that's just a cop out in my opinion. Ooh, the, I mean, uh, why would he get over it? While it, it while that is true, like the Oscars are predominantly like won by whites, but there are also more white actors. So like, it's like, well, it's just is it a is it a numbers game there? This thing is just you know, Al Sharpton needs to get removed. I, no, I, I I listen, I I get it. I if they feel if 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 they if Black people feel that they're not fairly represented in the Oscars, but I think that it's just another outlet to complain. Uh, uh, yeah, like I think she, uh, well, Jada Pinkett Smith is just complaining that Will didn't get a nomination. Maybe he should have. For some crappy concussion, NFL movie to, that twelve people. No, watched. I didn't see j- concussion. I saw, although I no seen a lot saw of movies. It. That's the point. <laughs> no fucking cares. Well, man, what about Michael B. Jordan? He played very well um, in Creed. Oh, Creed was a great movie, by the way. Creed was good. It I had didn't... stellar reviews. I didn't watch. Oh, it. it was good. I saw pretty much. I saw Creed was good. Big Short was good. Uh, Spectre was all right. Um, what else did I see? I saw. I saw pretty much all the decent movies. I did a little catch up, and I did most of the, played. Saw most of those, um, but. Uh, yeah, so they were good, but I mean, I didn't see concussion, so I don't know if he warranted a nomination. I heard he was good. Was he great? No. I mean, look, I mean, you don't hear uh, Leonardo DiCaprio complaining that he doesn't win, you know, uh, because he's white or whatever. Uh, but it's, but it's a different story. I, I these mean, cards been played. Get over it. Let's no, that's on. not necessarily. Well, listen, I mean, uh, in, listen. There, in some sh- we're not instances, in apartheid. we're not in apartheid. But in some instances, we're it's not segregated. It, it, no, but in some get instances, it. it is true that like, you know, some races get left out in the cold. But in this particular instance, I think J.D. Pinkett is just complaining because my husband didn't get nominated. I stopped watching Gotham because she's a bitch. And yeah. I don't like I'm her. I'm not really a fan of her. I'm a big fan of Will Smith. I mean, I think everybody is. He's huge. You know, the, It's funny because I, I like, yeah. like him on Facebook. Whenever he posts something, he's like the only one I see to get like a million likes on his posts. You know, it's an obscene amount of people love this guy around the so world. Let's get back to Suicide Squad. Sure. Um, he's a fixture in it. But Jared Leto clearly is the spotlight, and for the minimal we've seen, the every you know trailer they give a little more Joker. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, they get uh, they gave a, a good amount here. I think he'll be a good Joker. He he looks more comic Joker than yes the two previous incarnations, which in their own rights are great. Yeah, Michael Sin and Ledger. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah. And, and, I, I think she looks good in it too. Margot uh, Robbie. Yeah, man. I think she'll be a good. Uh, the more we see of her, it's just smoke show psychopath. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll be beautiful. She'll, it's a beautiful disaster. She'll be good as uh, Harley Quinn. I think he'll be uh, Will Smith will be good as the character he's playing. Um, and the and the, and the trailer Dead looks shot, good. That shot. That shot. And the trailer looks good. So, uh, what do you think about the all the new Superman? The uh, it's oh, very oh, ambitious project. Yeah, got a the, lot going. Have on. Have you heard the new news that there might be Dark Side in it? Have you heard that? Uh, a friend of mine emailed me recently. Uh, he's not in it. It's going to be a prelude. Oh, kind of. Maybe they'll. Maybe he'll have like an after po- post credit scene stuff. or maybe something like I'm that. I'm not sure if they're doing post credit because Dark Side was huge in the Superman world. I remember he's sort of a Thanos. Yes, in DC. That's right. Kind of the end game monster villain. The, exactly the uh, the boss monster for Superman, uh, and uh, that he was very big in the TV the the, car, the cartoon TV show, the animated series. When so, I used to watch, I mean, the Batman the animated series was the best one, but the Superman oh, one, phenomenal. phenomenal show. But they also the Superman did a very similar one, which was not really as good. Like, yeah, that it was great. Uh, and the Superman one, I remember one of the biggest episodes was that when Superman had to fight Darkseid. So my opinion is uh Dark Side essentially will be more a Justice League villain. Oh yeah. I think he's too big for the bridges to just use on them too. Sure though. So they'll uh, intertwine it then in the but end. But the, the the previews I've seen, people are very questioning Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, no, I think he's fine. I think, I he's, think fine. he's good. Cause I he's think very he's maniacal. Yeah. He's kind of a smart guy. He's, he's playing crafty, it good. Like they're weird. saying, oh, he's too too tiny and too young and too scrawny, and it's like. But Lex Luthor's not a bodybuilder. Yeah, he's not a like maybe in the cartoon show he was like. But he has long hair, but if he no, but he's gonna go bald. Again, <laughs> he's going bald. This is his first appearance. Yeah, I mean, like anything. Well, Professor X has hair, and what's Look it called? The bo- the balding McElroy, McElroy yeah. He's bald. Mac- McElroy, yeah. Yeah, now he's a, now he's a bald. That's another movie oh. very excited for. The new X-Men one. What's the name of it again? Uh, Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. That should be very good. Uh, McElroy and Fast Oscar Bender. Isaac playing um, Apocalypse. 
Yeah. Black Lore and Fassbender. They're great. Best cast. They're great. So Fassbender was all. Yeah, they're great. No, it's the both. We've, num- both we've mentioned that a number of times. Fantastic jobs in the last few. Stellar sure. job. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, Fassbender was good in the uh, Munn, in the Steve Jobs movie. Olivia Munn, uh, Psylocke. She's playing Psylocke Aaron in that movie. Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend, which people don't know. Yeah, no, I know that. Yeah, who doesn't know that at this point? Uh, it looks phenomenal. Sure. Yeah, so that'll be good. And I'm also I, I, glad. Fassbender was good in Jobs. Did you see Jobs? I didn't. It was, it, he was all right. He I plays an the asshole, Ashton which Kutcher is what Steve Jobs was. Twenty minutes. And you didn't I like it. I didn't hate it. the Ashton Kutcher one. People that got terrible reviews. I didn't mind it. Maybe because I like the story. The Were you American, high? Or? I like American success stories. You had to be high. Were you high? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was fine. Were you drunk? I like American success stories. You know, I like the story of Apple. I, and uh, why is Ashton Kutcher an American success story? He's an idiot. He looked well. He looked like Steve Jobs. He looked more like Steve Jobs than Fastbender did. Although Fastbender might have played a more realistic Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was Fast an asshole. Fastbender is German. He's more efficient. Yeah, he's more efficient as an asshole guy. Oh, what, I think, what's his name? Uh, Steve Jobs was like a Syrian. He sounded like Syrian or something. Uh, not that that had anything to do with it. Casting. Maybe his mother, like half Syrian. Yeah, maybe half Syrian. But, uh, yeah, but that movie's all right. He really but... wasn't a refugee. <laughs> no, he wasn't a refugee. <laughs> We're going to keep off, we'll keep off that topic. But, uh... Yeah. Um. So, what else was uh good? What did you see? Uh, now, what do you think about the new uh Star Trek trailer? The one that used yeah, the Beastie Boys sabotage song. Just it to me. You uh, just showed. Evening. You just watched it a little while ago. Awesome. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Awesome. I think it'll be good. I liked the first one. The second one was all right. Um, I think this one will be good too. So you know, they're action movies now. They're Captain no longer Kirk, sci-fi. I want, you know, People Shatner, don't have the attention spans for regular science fiction. Gene anymore. Roddenberry originals. Gene Waddenberry's freaking spinning in his grave because he had a different idea. Probably a different idea of what science fiction was. Star Trek is, is the first Star Trek that's appealing to me. Is this new movies? Yeah. Well, because well, I didn't really watch the Patrick Stewart stuff. I, oh, Next Generation. I like Next Generation, but I'm, I, then again, I like stuff yeah, like that. Reading Rainbow with the sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lamar. Uh, whatever. I can't remember his name. Uh, I almost had it. Not Lamar Odom, but. Uh yeah, friggin' reading Rainbow. Yeah, he was the guy, and then the right, Marina so asserts us. To cap off, uh, cap it off. You want to mention this? Uh, the retro food. And, All right, uh, we'll do. Yeah, our retro food of the week is gonna be PB Crisps. Do you do you remember P uh, PB Crisps, Sean? So vaguely, essentially, it was uh, similar to um, Nutter Butters when I came well, out they they look like Nutter Butters, but they were like they were made by planters who makes the um. The peanuts. So Mr. Peanuts. Though. Yeah, Mr. Peanut is on he's the very bag. Very iconic, dude. He's like he's, he's the like only anthropomorphic peanut with a top hat and a monocle and a cane. <laughs> he's like totally tight. He's very iconic. He's very iconic and very yeah. elegant. He's got a nice smile and a on his face. And uh, he um essentially well what PB crisps were were that they were shaped like a peanut. They were actually shaped like a peanut, like circular, it's like a peanut shell. Like yeah, of a two the dual full peanut shell. And when you was bite it, shell it, edible or yeah, yeah, it wasn't a real shell. It was a, it was like a, it was like, like a cookie. It was like a cookie shaped like a peanut, and inside of it, it had like this peanut butter cream in it. But it was like a, it wasn't peanut butter. It was like a sweet peanut butter type cream, uh, you know. And it was they were really good. They were it was not a peanut butter a peanut well, at all. It was straight up cookie. So it wasn't a marketing success. No, but I love them. They were really good. They were like because I I like I used to like um nutter butters. But uh, if you're a fan of Nutter Butter, I'm sure you'll love this. They were crispy. They, you had a crunch into them. You know, the shell, it looked like a shell. It wasn't actually a shell. It was a cookie, and inside it had this See, cream you filling. You showed me the packaging. Yeah, it was like red packaging. I they were big in the 90s or relatively. The yeah, no, they were around in the 90s. I had, I, I had uh, my fair of enjoyment of them. Another retro food I want to mention to you, I don't know if you remember, it's called Pizza Chips. Pizza Chips. They were made pizza by chips. Keebler. Yeah. LeVar Burton is the the rating rainbow guy, but uh, pizza chips. Let's see who they were made by. Keebler, uh, yes. Now were they chips like that tasted like pizza flavored? I, them being I awesome. got Totino's pizza chips. Were they Totino's? No, Totino's. Oh no, Keebler pizza chips. All right, right coming up right here. Early nineties. Like, remember my grandmother buying them for me? I've been five, six. So they were old. potato chips that like had a pizza flavor. <sighs> I don't. They were. Oh, I seen these. They are like. They were, um... They weren't... I don't think they were potatoes. Yes. They were called... No, they, they were... They, were they looked, No, they were like... Dor- they looked like Doritos. Look at this. To take a picture of this one. They had a more cracker texture, I feel like. Did they? But in this picture, they look like fucking straight-up Doritos to me. 
Sure pizza, they were a white bag. Keebler, yes. Pizzerias, pizza chips by Keebler, and they were these are cheese pizza flavored, and they're essentially a little slice of pizza, they kind were, of like a Dorito. They like were a little slice of pizza. Put those back. Put, put all my Oreos back. I get were all, Can you get away? They were awesome, and uh, <laughs> so someone dropped in a line. They were like, "Oh, a TGI Fridays released a similar version." Like, you know, they're crappy Friday chips. They sell at that, that, CVS. These come right up. These come right up here. They look like these. Uh, they were better than that. Horrendously, not a comparison. Okay, so these but were good. These that, look good. They look like like Doritos that you would put on your tongue. Kid, Ooh, flavor! Oh, they smoke Doritos out of the water. So, uh, yeah, we're going to end the show today, but, uh, but uh, we're still yeah, discussing I think that's... the Star Wars. Well, oh, well, one more one more thing. We'll put uh, five seconds. What do you think of, um, oh, the, well, the X-Files reboot. We have to mention that. We have to mention the X-Files reboot. I'm a huge X-Files fan. We're a huge X-Files fan. Oh, I think we'll follow on it more next week. Not only that, I'm more uh, David Duchovny fan. I always liked him. Yeah, he's a good actor. I, I, I like he's him. He's a good in my Californication. Opinion. He was great. Right. He's great. Right. He is a sex addict in real life. He is. Yeah, he was a yeah, sex addict in real life. him paying $3,000 a month for pornography. Yeah, like who the, who the hell pays money for, for porno anymore? He must have been getting some high-quality HD porn, you know? But, but uh... And, uh, the girl, Jillian, what's her name? Jillian Anderson. She aged, like, fine wine. She looks she great. She looks fantastic. She, they both look good, so... And it, it's a, it's not, like, embarrassing to watch. You know, you, you sometimes you watch these reboots and, like, I oh, my like God, these people are so old. Alien. Sure. Uh, and I liked the, the first episode. They threw some pseudoscience in there, kind of the Bob Lazar stuff. They talked about Unipentium uh, Element 151, which Bob Lazar touts is how that they power the alien spacecrafts. And they talk about S4. So they talk about some, like, pseudoscience in, in, in it. And it was... consistent, and they kind of modernized with the same theme. Right, it's the, exactly they mod and then and then the, I don't know if you remember the cheesy '90s graphics, but oh, like a spaceship, and it looks like somebody drew it off the screen. Remember, <laughs> nowadays it looks when decent. When I, I did some projects, like uh, presentations, and I used that theme music. So oh like, yeah, yeah. Sean did a school project, and it was what was it? Aliens in Civil no, War. So my uh, s- my uh, theme was Civil War, UFOs and aliens. <laughs> Civil War. So I had no. pictures of. Uh, like Abraham Lincoln shaking Gray's hands. Right, right. <laughs> no, it was Civil War UFOs and dinosaurs. Oh, right, right, right. The pterodactyl. I had a picture of the Confederate Army shooting down a pterodactyl. <laughs> That's a great. I remember the picture you it was had. A up fake too. picture, but it was. Fucking it awesome. was like an old, cool photo picture. So my grades were: I got an A for creativity presentation because presentation. it was I done had in had a the audience fully engaged oh it's totally great it's such bo- had, <laughs> an F for subject matter so an A and F like a average C. to a C yeah because that it was two grades yeah it was it was done on it was uh, PowerPoint it was a PowerPoint subject presentation. matter and yeah um, audience participation yeah we, we're all engaged oh, I got good. an A and F so it averaged out to a C I think the way it ended was one of the best things I remember like one of the kids, I think it was Shane, Shane, Shane Hulian, because the subject matter was fake. That's why he didn't get a good grade. So there. everything I but put it, it was averaged to a C. Bullshit. It averaged to a C but because I had everyone engaged and super interested. Yeah, it was it was very imaginative, but um, yeah, and it. I think the last frame, still of it, the last frame of the PowerPoint was something funny that had us all cracking up. I forget what it was. I've been Alf, I think. It was Alf? Yeah, it might have been Alf. It was Alf, the Alf. fucking furry aliens. He threw Alf on the last one to just top off the nonsense. That made no, no historical accurate content whatsoever. It was better when I put a DC stay for my other one in. Oh man, I was never there for that one. They didn't get a good reaction. Like, why are you <laughs> pouring this? Like murder? right around the time, it's still topical. That's really bad. Uh, one last thing. What do you think? They're remaking the DeLorean. What do you think about that? Awesome. <laughs> That's all I got to oh, say. They're remaking the exact if DeLorean. I want that Powerball to buy a DeLorean like, a couple it's, weeks it's, ago. It, I can't believe they're remaking this. And the funny thing was when I read when I heard I read the article, the, the a comment from one of the DeLorean spokespeople like, well, why would we change the body style? <laughs> it's not even like they're revamping it. It's the same exact body. Right, but you'd think that they'd maybe like make like a 2016 version well, of it. No, they're not doing that. They're making the nah, same exact the thing. Motor, that they made the motor is going to be modernized. Yes, but the body is not being changed. I buy a new DeLorean, I could drive it. Yeah, no, they're, they're moder- the, the motors for those cars were garbage. They're like 110 horsepower. I buy a 1981 DeLorean. 
I can maybe drive it to New Jersey at top. Yeah, uh, and and what's their top speed? I don't even know if it can make it to eighty-eight miles got an a hour. Blizzard here in uh, New York. Rough blizzard, thirty inches here, you can't thirty-one drive inches. DeLorean, no, fuck <laughs> it. This an inch of snow on the ground. DeLorean. Those things are low as yeah. That thing's not going anywhere. It's staying still. But uh, well, so they're just, saying the the stick price. The DeLorean is modernized to. They'll adjust. modernize the motor and the tra- and the and the drive train and all that and transmission. All that yeah, no, because the they they said that they will. Yeah, so sticker price. They said. They under a hundred thousand. They, they didn't, didn't specify. Give a specific price under a hundred G's. Whatever that means. means. <laughs> I'm guessing seventy. To yeah, seventy to eighty, right? You know, like you they better give it three hundred. Yeah, you could buy yourself seventy grand. You could buy Corvette. a top of the line. Buy yourself a Corvette. Awesome. Anything like that, you know, like you buy yourself a Z06 Corvette for that price, almost. And uh, you know, so, so they better give the thing. 300 horsepower if they're going to, you know, 400 horsepower. Of course, but it's just funny that they haven't, they're not changing the stainless steel body. I'll I'll buy one and and put, make it eight, give it 80 miles an hour. So that's it for this week. It's been real. We'll, uh, We'll get another one in soon, hopefully Sooner next week. Sooner than later. Absolutely. Like us on Facebook and uh, and YouTube. I throw a lot of fun stu- stuff junk on the YouTube page, Retro Kid Podcast YouTube page. And that's it for this week. And uh, keep watching the stars.